Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and to a brand new video series, One Minute Debrief by Captain Joe. In this series, we'll be taking a closer look at incredible aviation moments and fails. I'll take you through a short yet detailed explanation of what happened to help you improve your aviation knowledge. I might even throw in a couple of surprises here and there, so stay tuned. <laughs> Before we kick off, I'd like to extend a big thank you to everyone that sent in their videos over the past few months. My inbox was exploding. If you want a specific video to be featured in my series, please send the YouTube link via Instagram and I'll do my best to include it. So what are we waiting for? And let's get started. Target 107, you aren't at the moment, but I'm sure you will be shortly. So go up to Tango and double back on Alpha, please. Today's video is brought to you by the Captain Joe online shop. From classic removal before flight key rings to sticker bundles, aviation calendars, and the infamous Captain Joe 747 8 are all fantastic gifts for yourself or a friend. So check the link in the description box below to get your Captain Joe merch today. Alrighty. Definitely windy. Yay! Oh my god. <laughs> god. Okay, the uh, Boeing 787 coming into London. It's pretty obvious that it's super, super windy. I'm um, just looking at the weather. The plane is sort of bouncing inwards as it comes in for landing. What I think is really good to see here, well, first of all, the, the pilot reacted quickly enough to not land on the nose gear first, which of course is probably some real serious damage. The plane shortly touched down on the landing gear, the main landing gear. But what you can also see is that the aircraft immediately gets its power back and then sort of climbs out and performs the go around. This is a good showcase actually to, to let you guys know that when we come in for landing, we never idle back uh, just before when we actually start, start the flare. And this plane hasn't started its flare yet. So meaning that the power is somewhere at 50 to 60% giving it so little spool up time to then actually go into the into the go around severe crosswind for sure nice what a, I... <laughs> oh god okay all right good save at the end all right there's a couple of things you can immediately see right off the spot the wind is coming from a pilot's perspective from the right hand side, so it's a crosswind landing, severe, and it is coming into Prestwick. Prestwick is actually really well known for some really good crosswind landings. You can see that the rudder is deflected into the left, although the wind is coming from the right. He does that because when he does his flare, he wants to obviously correct the plane to get it onto the center line. That's why he applies left rudder. But what the colleague, I assume, done incorrectly here he's put in too much aileron so at the same time as you press the left rudder to correct the plane for the center line at the same time obviously the wing wants to tip into this side you have to then correct with right aileron and i think his input was just a little bit too much which then sort of overcorrected it and the plane sort of tilted onto the uh, right hand side but what also is a really good case here to see is that the bank limit you have on ground or in flare the limiting factor is actually the outer engines, the engine number four or engine number one. Those are the ones who are going to strike the ground first rather than engine two or three. Yeah, but at the end, nothing happened. All good. Okay, good old cargo looks coming in. Uh, I actually know about this incident. I've heard of it before. Incident of, of the problem they had. Beautiful landing. Ah, okay, I can spot something immediately. All right, good. I'll just hold it right there. Okay, now just judging by uh, the paused video and what you can see that the landing gear doors are all open, uh, especially here at the, the nose wheel. Normally that landing gear door is closed uh, upon landing if all the hydraulics work. And it's obvious that one of the hydraulic system has failed and it is, and that I can show you in the next picture here, is if you look at the reverses upon landing, all the reverses are open except for engine number one. Uh, that means that the hydraulic system number one is down. Could have been an overheat, low pressure, something that the entire hydraulic system one had to be shut off. 
That also then has the cause that the nose wheel steering is not working and you'll see that they had to then request for a pushback car to actually tow them off the uh, runway. And also you have to apply the landing gear alternate extension, which is quite excessive. It takes very, very long. And also the flaps from position one to five take forever to extend. Classic hydraulic one failure on the 747. Okay, well here we have a, a Boeing business jet coming in for landing. You see the head up display down and the windscreen wiper is going at full blast. Minimums. Minimums. Yay! Yeah, that's what I would have done. Wow. Okay, that is actually super rare uh, to see pilots perform a go around due to visibility issues regarding rain. Super heavy precipitation, that heavy that they couldn't actually see where they're going. It is great to see the communication between the two pilots. Obviously they fly into the rain, uh, they lose visibility, and then one of them calls out go around. And then it's just a procedure, fly the go around, you can hear positive freight, the other one says gear up. But what's interesting also that they came all the way down to the minimums and they saw the runway, minimums. so meaning they could technically land, but then after passing the minimum, then the visibility went further below than minimum. And that is actually super, super rare to see planes go around due just to precipitation. But well done, performed by the colleagues. Okay, here we have an Airbus A300 by DHL, taking off in Schiphol. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Seems to be good. Yeah, okay, that's that's the classic scenario. That's the classic scenario we train in the simulator day in, day out. You hurtle down the runway, V1, rotate, you lift off, and then boom, you hit that bird and you get that bird strike. Even with some flames coming out, I mean, that could have turned into something really severe, such as an, an engine stall or a surge, which then sort of creates this really loud banging noise, but that wasn't the case. Um, just reading in the description is that they actually continued uh, to Leipzig, which is obvious that it's their, their home base, meaning they can do maintenance there. But that also proves that um, the engine indications were fine. Apparently no severe um, vibrations of any sort or some kind of damage that is, uh, indicated on their engine parameters. So yeah, just continue to Leipzig. Um, but what is interesting to see at the end of the video, they must have contacted Tower, uh, letting them know that they had the bird strike. And then you see this car coming onto the runway, obviously checking if there was any debris, engine debris maybe, or even dead birds uh, on the runway. <laughs> and you can clearly see this guy here carrying away quite the huge bird. That's quite quite a bird there. So yeah, lucky nothing happened. I'm pretty sure some good engine inspection had to be done after that. And maybe the plane was AOG after that. Um, maybe they had to do some repairs on the engine later. Okay, next video. What? <laughs> okay, you don't see that very often. Okay, good. A 747 with five engines. That was a, a Qantas flight uh, going from Perth to Johannesburg uh, with passengers. That's the cool thing about it. And not a lot of people know, but there are some versions of the 747 that have a mounting bracket uh, very close to the main fuselage where they can actually mount a fifth engine. Obviously, there's no fuel lines going to it and anything. It's just to actually transport an engine from A to B in case there's no maintenance at the airport where the other airplane has landed uh, and has an inoperative engine. Saves a lot of money for the company to not ship the engine via air freight. This is actually not the first time Qantas has done this before on the 707s, which you can see here in this picture. And the coolest fact actually is uh, now on the Cosmic Girl, which is the Virgin Atlantic 747, that mounting bracket is actually now the launch pad for the Launcher 1, where they sort of attach that rocket below the wing. That's what they use it now for. Pretty cool. All right, next video. What? <laughs> Mate, what the hell? What's that cat doing up there? <laughs> Oh my God, this guy's reaction, that is priceless. 
What's he gonna do? Ah, okay, I can already see he's, he's gonna do a traffic path and land. Oh my god. Okay, that's, hel <laughs> that's hilarious. That proves you should do your outside check properly, but also your inside check, meaning, I mean, how would you expect a cat to be sitting in your wing? I assume this is like a little ultralight plane where it's more or less all an open cockpit and uh, and the wings and everything is just sort of foiled, meaning, uh, yeah, something easily can crawl into your wing, but that is hilarious. I mean, I would get the shock of my life. Also, I'm just gonna replay that reaction of this guy's uh, face. That was hilarious. Okay, fantastic, cool. Okay, a rescue helicopter strikes power lines. Oh, mate, mate! Yeah. Ah. Oh boy, that didn't look too good at all. Yeah, I think that is one of the biggest, biggest threats ever for helicopter pilots is uh, power lines, which are barely seeable. I mean, here you, you can see that there was no like one of those red balls they normally attach to it. Uh, they should have probably there that the helicopter pilots could see it but uh, super, super dangerous. Actually, that's one of the reasons that some of these helicopters have these line cutters that in case they really go into a power line that they actually cut the power line, it actually proves to work. It really works. I'm, I'm always surprised to see that. He was actually fine until the power lines got together and then uh, sort of created that connector and then you see the sparks flying off. Reading in the description, uh, the helicopter landed safely and uh, had obviously a couple of burn marks, but I'm pretty sure that some of the uh, aviation instruments also got fried a little bit. Luckily, really nothing happened here, but yeah, Whew, gee. Ah, yes, I absolutely love these kind of videos. <laughs> What's he doing? Okay, this must be some little embryo jet, I think. <laughs> Great, fantastic. This is hilarious. Ah, that's great. It makes me really smile to see this because, I mean, these guys are out in the cold all day and they get a bit of recognition when you guys hold the camera out of the window and they can see that you're filming them. It's great to see that they're in a positive mood and use that opportunity to dance uh, on the apron, uh, not to make a fool out of themselves, just sort of to, you know, to embrace life a little bit and, and see the job uh, in a positive way. This is also a big shout out to all the ground crew. I really appreciate the work you do 24 seven out in the cold, in the rain. I always feel so bad. So thank you very much, you guys, appreciate it. Okay, going along the street. Wait, <laughs> what? <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> wow okay that is a surprise uh that very much looks like a road in england uh with these stone walls which is famous for it yeah, that gives you the shock of your life when you come down the road and suddenly have a helicopter in front of you i think uh, because of the dense fog that is a common technique that uh, helicopter pilots use i actually experienced something similar here in munich sort of the rescue helicopters are based out at the airport and they very often use the river Isar uh, to follow their way into uh, the city center especially when it's really really foggy and this could maybe one of those cases where the helicopter decided I'm going to use the road as a guidance, more or less, tag along wherever he needs to go. But that was pretty low. I mean, if there's like lorries coming along uh, that road, he might get into trouble. If helicopter pilots are watching this, please let me know if this is a common technique you guys use. I know you guys are IFR approved, or a lot of helicopters are. That's a way you guys navigate uh, along roads, uh, rivers and stuff. Uh, just let me know if, if this is a technique. Really cool. I hope you enjoyed today's aviation highlights and experienced a few laughs along the way. I know that cat video <laughs> really got me to stitches. Please help me help you by using the poll function to choose what type of future videos you would like me to showcase and break down in this series. The choice is yours. And therefore, thank you very much for your time. Here's your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel, check. Activate the notification bell, check. Follow my Instagram account, check. Perform a touch and go at my website, check. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. Wishing you all the best, your Captain Joe.